This clip is in response to a request to cover some of the nuances of area study number one. So I'll start by looking at your Brockets versus your Wernicke's area and we'll address the following, identifying the location, major functions, discussing what an aphasia is, and dealing with symptoms of both Brockets and Wernicke's. Make sure when you are asked to identify locations that you give both the lobe and the hemi. So obviously for Broca's, the left frontal, and for Wernicke's, the left temp temporal. If For a one mark question, if you're asked for the major function, go with the obvious one, Broca's area, speech production, activating the vocal apparatus. For your Wernicke's area, talk about speech comprehension of both the spoken and the written word. If it's asking for functions, a plural, and let's say it's a two marker. For Wernicke's, you could also talk about locating words from memory that enables you to convey meaningful speech. And for Brockers, you could talk about the analysis of the grammatical structure of others. In terms of aphasia as a generic concept, there's two things you need to identify. Number one is that it's a speech impairment, and secondly, it's a result of damage. It's not psychological, it's not a developmental disorder. So those two points need to be emphasised. So with the symptoms of Broca's aphasia, we need to basically construct a response that shows we clearly know the difference between this and Wernicke's. So you're going to talk about speech being slow, deliberate, lacking conjunctions, mainly verbs and nouns, and effortful. With your Wernicke's, they're having difficulties understanding the written and spoken word. Their speech is like a word salad lacking function words and because of the lack of victim awareness they're literally not even aware that they're having difficulties conveying meaning to others. In, term in terms of spatial neglect again we ignore the minority here we focus on the majority of spatial neglect victims have suffered damage to their right parietal lobe if we can ask you you won't need to discuss um, that some people who suffer from spatial neglect have actually damaged their left parietal lobe in terms of the symptoms, we need precision here. So what you'll say is a failure to attend to stimuli and you'll need to emphasize left side of the environment. Okay, just saying fail, failure to attend to stimuli on one side doesn't cut it. You need to be descriptive. And a key point here is, and I've talked about this before, is that it's not a visual disorder. Their eyes can detect the stimuli on the left side of their environment that'll be converted into electrochemical energy. It'll basically um, be conveyed or transmitted to the visual cortex, but their internal radar system will fail to process stimuli on the left side of the world, a lack, a lack of spatial awareness in a sense. So when you're talking about spatial neglect, don't say a failure to see, say a failure to attend, because we need precision. Split brain, split brain surgery has been a stumbling block for students over many years, so expect a significant question on this. A part A question might be in the short answer section, might be just asking you to discuss the severing of the corpus callosum to reduce the severity of the epileptic seizures. And then you might get a B part to the question, which might require you to explain why a patient can or can't name an object flash to either the left or right visual field. So let's start with the right visual field. Two things you need to do. Firstly, you'll need to make it abundantly clear that the patient can't name the image. And then you'll need to justify that by identifying the structure involved. And you'll say because the image is processed in the left, verbal hemi, underlining left, underlining verbal. Then when we get the reciprocal question on um, left visual field, again, two things are required. First of all, you'll need to make a link to the question. You'll say that the patient can't name the image. And then you'll justify that by linking it to the structure involved. You'll say because it's processed in the right nonverbal hemi and it can't be transferred to the left verbal hemi due to the severing of the corpus callosum. You'll need to state that if it's not specified in the question that the corpus callosum has been split. If that is specified in the question, then that second part to that response is not required. A C part to the question might be discuss other ways that they can identify it. So... What you'll need to specify here is, and you'll need to be specific, you'll need to say, well, yes, if it's flashed to the left visual field, they could draw it with their left hand, which gets its control from the right hemi, or pick it up 
um, out of a bunch of objects hidden from view with their left hand. So it's important that you mention that the left hand, which again gets its control from the right hemi.